Hey, this is Candia Raquel, founder of Centro de Poder, and you are at the Sensual Sessions podcast, the place to explore sensing pleasure through your senses and expressing yourself in a way that is completely free from inhibition. And today we have a very special guest. This is Angela McMillan. She is a somatic marketing mentor. She's the founder of Movement Online Academy, and she's a Feldenkrais method practitioner, among other things. Angela, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. So, <laughs> With our matching uh, yeah, skeletons. <laughs> matching skeletons. Like there are four skeletons in this episode. Two living skeletons and two plastic skeletons. Does your yeah. skeleton has a name? Yes, his name is Ziki. Ziki. His name is Calaco. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> Polly in in Spanish and he, he has two last names that are Carpe Diem. <laughs> <laughs> nice, love it. Yeah. Mm. So I I was super curious to ask you about the integration that first you do within yourself and then you express in the world of being like a driven businesswoman that is a marketing coach and works with milestones and clarity and strategy. But at the same time, you are um, a somatic mover. Like like you, you do this uh, very direct strategic work, but without bypassing the bodily sensitivity and this is like almost rebellious in our hustle culture so <laughs> i am very curious to know like <laughs> what was your first glimpse on this integration that you have and that you teach yes possible like have you ever been like mm, embodied and enjoying doing marketing and making money or it wasn't always like that yeah it definitely was not always like that <laughs> okay okay um so there is for the uh, colleagues out there <laughs> yes <laughs> my journey to somatics i started as a dancer i was a dancer and i did my professional dance training And the year after my professional dance training, I met my Feldenkrais teacher. And I met him at a dance party. He was a musician as well, an electronic music producer. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so, uh, and he was working with elite athletes in that were rollerbladers. Do you know rollerbladers, the yeah. inline skates? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so they were traveling the world as professional athletes and he was working with them and what he did with them was introduced what he called bitch moves. Oh, bitch moves. Non-habitual moves. Yeah, non-habitual moves. <laughs> so I thought it was really cool. So what they were doing is they were doing the competitions on their preferred side. They were elite, you know, extreme yeah. sportsmen. And then they're doing the competition on the other leg, which they weren't getting as high a jumps or it wasn't as spectacular, but the competition was like, whoa, they're able to do it on the other side. So I thought that was pretty cool. I'm like, oh, what, what's this? What is this Feldenkrais about? And at the time, when you talk about uh, hustle culture and moving fast and, you know, that's what our culture is used to. Yes. Uh, as a dancer, that's what I was used to. You push hard, you work hard, you stretch to your limits, you all of those things. And at the time, I'd actually just started break dancing. Wow. Yeah. And so I was trying the elite moves in break dance, one of them called the windmill. The windmill. The windmill is the one where you're rolling on your shoulders and your legs are like flying yeah. in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but with the leg. And, uh, yeah. And you, you see that move and you, you have to push for that. You have to move fast. And that, yes. my teacher said to me, oh, you know, show me what you're working on. So there uh, I started flopping around on the floor like a dead fish because I wasn't, it was like so far off. <laughs> I was getting bruised. And he said, go slow. I'm like, why would you go slow? You can't go slow to do that move, right? So, no, you, you need like, the no, momentum, I would think. Like you, you, and you need like at least the, the adrenaline and like the muscular tone and potency. But I don't know. Maybe may, was it possible? Was it possible to do it slow? No, it's not possible to do it slow. But when you go slow, and he gave me the moves because it's a combination of a few different moves. Uh, Feldenkrais. If you're looking at Feldenkrais lessons it's a combination of a few different lessons so he showed me the couple of lessons that I needed to do slowly so when you go slow enough as we know when you go slow your body can learn the way you know the the patterning the 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 way that you need to fire up the muscles and so then when you do go fast you can perform it Yeah. And so I was able to master that move very quickly by going slowly. So that just highlights how important it is to slow down so that you can go fast and wow. monitor yourself. Wow. Yes. Mm. By going slow, you really learn each detail and the connection that leads one thing to the next thing and the next thing. So you will get to that speed by removing the friction of lousy movements that may get in the way if you just yep. try to force yourself into the movement. Wow. Mm -hmm. It must have been a huge re revelation coming from dance, ah. specifically like coming from breakdance, which actually has like this very proud attitude that it's it's very confrontational breakdance. Like you really go to the limits And then, like, I need to to slow down. But, yeah. Yeah. Winning formula. Yeah. So. Yeah. Winning formula. <laughs> winning. Like, if you want to so go faster, you have business. to slow down first. Yeah. So, I take that into business. You know, when you're first learning business, marketing, sales, especially. I was not from that world. I'm from a dance world. I use my body. And then I was a somatic practitioner. And so bringing that into business, I had to slow down first and get the foundations. Now, when I first started in business, I didn't do that. I skipped over some of those foundational steps. Okay. And the how it resulted, no sales, no, you know, yeah. my business was not growing. Yeah. So you do have to understand the foundations of your business the, at that and go slowly and really um, understand the bias psychology of who you want to help as well. Just like with Feldenkrais and somatics, we meet people where they are at. Yes. Their yeah. awareness of themselves, right? Yeah. And that's how you, that's what you have to bring into marketing and sales is you need to meet people where they're at, what they want, what their desires are to bring them in. And then once you start working with them, then you can actually give them what they actually need because we are not aware of what we need. We just think we're just all about ourselves. We're all about what we want, what our desires are. So when you meet someone or when you're trying to attract people into your business, you've got to meet them where they're at and slowly guide them towards what they actually need and what they're not aware of and those kind of things. And that's the foundations of, of building a successful practice if you're a Feldenkrais teacher or... Or a marketer or a break dancer or a high-performance athlete. Yeah, to, to meet the, the client, the customer, where, where they're at and also to know where you're at. And it's it's beautiful to understand like, okay, this is where I am at in my journey as a businesswoman 
or as a marketer or as a movement teacher or as a new mother or as a wife or whatever. And then go slowly because this uh, timing allows for for exploration and mm. for for going fully through the experience in a safe way and then yes. like speeding it up it's a piece of cake whereas the other way yeah. around like if we just want to run fast we have to push with a lot of tension because there there are areas that we just jump through that we don't know and we solve through through tension the missing links so instead of rolling we have to claw our way forward and it it's not smart and it's definitely not pleasurable it's even bad for health like burnout and overwhelm yeah. like i'm sure it's a factor of heart attacks so um mm. What what do you see in in your clients that take business coaching with you that is their biggest challenge when it comes to embodiment, when it comes to slowing down and connecting to to a pleasure to the pleasure that is in the process? Because I I feel that pleasure it's We are sold in our culture that pleasure is a product that, that you pay for it and it's transactional. But in reality, pleasure is more something that happens in a journey. And and the mm. result it's just like the cherry on top of, of the cake. But I don't see um this is something that lots of people realize. So What's the response mm. of, of the people that you're working with when when you invite them to slow down? Like, what do they say? Well, the beauty of my, most of the people I work with in in my coaching practice, in my marketing and practice, are Feldenkrais practitioners or in the wellness space. They understand that to how to take care of themselves. Okay. So they're under, but where they, they, where I coach them into tapping into finding more pleasure and curiosity is how they show up and share on social media to attract people, to get more visible. Because often we are challenged by this online social media space that we don't want to, we're scared of, of sharing our stories and our, our ourselves we're scared of what people will say we don't want to annoy our audience with sharing our 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 business and how i encourage that is you don't have to you don't never ever share a story um of challenge that you're still challenged by okay. you know you've got to heal from that challenge first before you can share it Um, and if you are sharing a story of challenge and, and, you know, that's a connection story for your audience to get to know you, sometimes the details don't really matter of the actual story. It's the feeling that you went through that connects us all. And so lean into that feeling that you were challenged by. So, um, It might be a, a breakup, a, a relationship breakup. We all have that experience. You don't need to go into the details of, oh, they did this and I did that and, da, da, you know, that's not relevant. It's We all have had that, that personal con connection story where we've had to break away from someone. Maybe it was a toxic relationship or something. So leaning into that feeling and experience to build that connection with your audience in finding um, pleasure 
in sharing that human connection. Finding pleasure yeah. in sharing the human connection. Once you have healed from, from that challenge. Yes, yeah. once you've healed from the challenge. Yeah, and I feel that's very important when when you want to present yourself in the world. Like, it's very important to have this human connection and the vulnerability because that's when, when trust can happen. But... Mm -hmm. If you're going through a challenge and you share the challenge, actually, you're not sharing the challenge. You are like, I mean, it's like going to, to therapy. Like <laughs> you're not sharing your story with the psychologist. You, you are making a cry for help. <laughs> so it's, it's nice to have this, this clear di distinction on where you're standing and what you're doing about. So it can be like more more mm. to to a better connection yeah yeah very, very nice and so do you ever get stressed out oh yes <laughs> yes <laughs> okay so so it's not like a yes. like a fixed state that i reach enlightenment and then i just and park here forever and ever like it's it's no, like, never Never. <laughs> so you can especially be when it comes to learning. <laughs> yeah, especially when it comes to learning technology. You know, technology. I didn't grow up with techno. I didn't grow up with computers. I think we. Well, I did get my first computer maybe when we were around eight years old, but we didn't have social media. We didn't have phones in our pockets. You know, like. Yeah. And so yeah, it can be challenging because it's unfamiliar right so often with my clients it is it's stepping out of our like being able to feel that uncomfortableness right but know that we need to if we're going to run a business online we need to understand the technology so how do you approach that in a way that's going to feel a little bit more comfortable and so what one way is to make sure you 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 do a a, a somatic practice before you open your computer right and approach it in a way that I'm learning I'm 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 researching right and if it if it all goes to like one of my clients actually the other day she's running her webinar and everything has been going wrong everything she even had to close the zoom room for the webinar because she'd lost control of something right? But it's being able to be in that uncomfortable feeling, oh no, and breathe through it, know that it's okay, these things happen, and then come back and she came back and was able to run her webinar, reopen the room and things like that. So just having that, with that skill set as Feldenkrais practitioners, right? But understanding, okay, there is a barrier there, there is that fear, is that that's a habit though as well it's a habit for you and how you pr approach technology we can break those habits if me a dancer that has no experience of technology or business has been able to do it anyone can right anyone can do it yeah and yeah the key is to make a shift in how how you approach the novelty like the the non-habitual and also yes. how, how you deal with with what's habitual and what is the comfort zone that can be that our comfort zone may not be technology like we we would prefer like write a let a handwritten letter and go to the post office and send it <laughs> not an email like yes and yeah. yeah like like more analogical <laughs> yeah and, it's like and so there's a few techniques I can, share. I can share a couple of things that I teach my clients and one is okay. you need to separate you need to separate your creativity writing time 
So when you're writing social media posts, when you're writing an email, when you're, you know, writing anything creative, that's one separate time. This, the other time is when you're using the technology or the systems to send that email. So you write the email and then you go into the technology at another time to send the email or to post on the social media. That's one way. Uh, one of the best techniques is if it's all feeling too much, you turn it off and you go away, you have a glass of water, you go for a walk around the block, you have a shower, <laughs> you do something else, you tend to the garden and then come back with a fresh mind because it doesn't have to happen all at once. Like that's that hustle culture. If you're finding that you're pushing too much, your tightness in breath, your shoulders are rising, that's when you do have to stop and yeah. and that's where static practice and being aware of yourself is beneficial because you'll feel that tension and tightness happening and go, okay, do, it, do I need to just spend a moment to breathe? Do I need to close the computer and come back another time? Mm. Yes. So that's just a, two techniques that yeah. really yeah. help. <laughs> that, that's, that's a great practice that sums up what we just said previously, that it begins with becoming aware of your body and trusting your body and letting what you're sensing have the last word and acting on it in a very gentle and respectful way. Like, okay, I'm going to close the computer now. It's not that I am canceling what I am doing. It's not that I am dropping off or, or I don't know, forgetting about my, my duties. No, it's like, I am slowing down. I am taking space. So I go mm. for a walk, have a glass of water, come back. And then I will come back, not just with me, but with a renewed state or a renewed sense of self. And also to keeping in mind that it's a good idea to run our marketing productive processes in a way that it's conducive to to a flow and which is conducive to pleasure meaning to to write the email and to do the writing and the creative work in in one compartment so you are just like focused on on bringing the, the idea into, into a shape, a text, and having a, a separate um, productive time to deal with the technology, to send the email, to post it on yes. social media. And it makes a lot of sense because those are different qualities of movement. Mm -hmm. if you think like if you're writing an email say it's like seven seven hundred words like you're gonna be there sitting one hour one hour and a half and you're just gonna use the keyword in a blank page yes it's very important to have like this state of, of flow and no distraction, no no notifications. Because if you go into social media, then like your auntie, it's going to ask you improper questions on your Facebook <laughs> Messenger and you will get a notification of one comment and then you think Mick Jagger is following you, but it's like a, an impersonate. Because Keith, Keith Richard actually followed me on TikTok and I thought, well, I don't know. I, I I don't know if I want to go and really check if it was Kate Richards or if it was an impersonator, but I felt super special. And then all my morning got derailed. <laughs> and then yeah. my productivity. <laughs> so yeah, it's like become aware of of what you're doing. Yeah. So so you can flow on the on a time yeah. that is good for you like go slow yeah like, like 
like with your Feldenkrais break dancing experience, like go down, <laughs> yes. go slower, <laughs> then move on faster. This is fantastic. Yeah. How can we know more about this? Yeah, so the I'll just give you the next step as well. Oh, okay. And okay. that's and the, that that is to know the times of day when you are more creative. Or when you are more able to be doing the technology. Okay. So for me, I I like to write in the mornings. Now, sometimes, uh, most of the time, I'll write in a notebook. I'll actually write in my notebook. And then later that day, that's when I'll turn my computer on and put that content onto the computer. So knowing what times of day you want to do that. When it comes to technology, I'll always suggest if it is something that is a barrier for you, that you find tricky, do it first thing in the morning. Okay, okay. So there's a book called Eat the Frog. Eat there's the a book frog. called Eat the yeah. Frog. Yeah. Eat the Frog by Brian Tracy. Yeah. The and he does that most difficult thing in the morning because then you've done the most difficult thing and that is eat the frog. You've eaten the frog first thing in the morning. <laughs> so, so you could write the email, the do creativity one day, and the next day that's when you open the computer and send it to your email list or, you know, post the social media content. Yeah. <laughs> that's a wonderful strategy that helps prevent getting a scattered mind because, yeah, it, it happened to me like I am halfway of, of writing an email and then I got a WhatsApp and, and then uh, I schedule a class and no, like it's, it's very good to have <laughs> like, like this uh, strategy of productivity that is conductive to pleasure and even do the, the creative, the writing part, like with a notebook and a logically written yeah. by, uh, writing with your hand. Yeah, like yeah. it very much. So now, <laughs> how can we do more tips and tricks on pleasurable money making, <laughs> productivity and marketing? Uh, uh, so I do have a free Facebook group. If people are on Facebook, it's called Movement Plus Mindset Plus Marketing <laughs> with Movement. Angela McMillan. Movement Plus Mindset Mindset Plus Marketing with Angela McMillan. Yeah. yeah, and it's got a plus sign for the plus. <laughs> or you can come into Movement Online Academy, which is where I've created this space for practitioners like ourselves to connect and the general public to learn more about somatic movement. And inside of there, I do have a, a, a free marketing program and I do have my marketing programs in that space as well. And my idea with the space is practitioners come and share their content, share their blogs, their videos, their ideas. And so then the, the general public can have a, a lot of different practitioners from all over the world to to converse with and, and learn from and with different voices just makes it a lovely space for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. No. You're inside there, aren't you? Yeah, yeah I, I am a, a super fan of Movement Online Academy. I, I Actually, I need to go and post like this, this week's essential sessions. Yes, you should. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So this is this is great. You have these two channels to connect with you. So one is movementonlineacademy.com and the yes. Facebook group is I just forgot it. Movement plus movement plus mindset plus marketing. Plus <laughs> marketing with Angela McMillan. Thank you so much, yes. Angela. This is like <laughs> pure practical gold on embodied marketing and doings. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Such a pleasure. And Essentialist, 
um, you you need to go to check these these websites with Angela. So you get more tools to to enjoy what you're doing. Like if you're getting started on on this entrepreneurial world, these tools are really gold because like just structuring your your productivity like Angela suggested can make a huge difference first and foremost in your health in your state and secondly in the creativity that you pour into your business because what people connect with is with your essence so you cannot go on and try to share something if you're depleted and it's very important that you take this this time to to go slow to connect with yourself to have a good structure to do your your marketing so you can be more effective and have a good time so well uh mm -hmm. if you haven't subscribed to the essential sessions podcast please come to www.centrodepoder.com and get yourself signed up to get them on your inbox every week. Until then, remember to take the time to sense your fire so you can share the flame.